All right, friends, welcome to health assessment. This is your first nursing class. It's gonna be okay, there's a lot going on this semester. You got tons of classes. Everything's kind of flying all over the place. Dates are getting scrambled around. It's a lot, it's hectic, it's crazy. But in my class, this is the sandbox. This is the training environment. So I need for you to understand when you step into my class. The purpose of my class is to learn, but more importantly, it's to grow and develop as you go along for this first semester. I am your co-pilot. I am the person that slaps the student driver sticker on the back of the vehicle. I'm the one that has the stick if you decide to nosedive. <laughs> It's okay, calm down. I hate to tell people to calm down. How about, um, how about remain calm? I like that better, that's a little classier. How about remain calm? I need for you to remain calm, okay? This is the crash that is normal. This is the, oh my God, I'm finally here moment and I don't know what to do. There's just so much happening. So let me help you by talking a bit about what I expect on the first couple of weeks of my class. Good, bad, and indifferent. So if you fall in between this spectrum, you are doing okay. So give yourself some grace. Because in this lifestyle, grace needs to be constantly had. And the more bitter we get in this lifestyle, if we start the wrong way and we get burned out and we get bitter, we will continue to be that person. And we will never be beneficial beyond giving someone a medication and my end report being nobody died. And for nurses that are listening to this, because I know I got a ton of LPNs, you might have just gave a chuckle because you know exactly what I'm talking about. We need to be back in the old mentality of nurses are strong and intelligent and poised and proper and a little bit gangster, so try me. I wish you would. That. That, my friends, is the legend, nay, the, the divinity within the classic interpretation of a battle cry of a nurse. And that is what I'm trying to get back in my world, which is why I'm at this facility. Because this facility, for whatever reason, has my type of people who knows what it is to crawl and to thrive. So that is a bit of genius that I find within you that I can find nowhere else and I refuse to leave because of that. So be proud. Be proud that you've taken the steps to get this far. Don't be afraid. Be afraid a little, I suppose, because you know there's fear to be had if you don't understand what it is to be fearless yet, but we're gonna get there, friends, we're gonna get there. So let's go to the next slide. Let's see what it is that I expect for the semester. Remember, if you fall in the spectrum, it's cool. Fall in the spectrum. All right, let's look at the next slide. So this is a question I've gotten this weekend. What do I need for my class? All right, lab, always bring your nursing bag. Always, always, always. Not just your nursing bag for the literalists, for the, all the things that go within your nursing bag. So your stethoscope, uh, your pin light, uh, thermometers in there, blood pressure cuffs in there. There's a couple of other things that are in there. Uh, relatable to neuro, if I'm not mistaken. All those things need to go every single time, no exceptions. Your first week of lab, which is going to be this coming up week, I suppose, uh, week two, you are going to get uh, a big packet. That packet, throw it into your bag, take your bag with you. Just know that your bag is your purse, your bag is your, you know, water cup. Like that is your thing that you always carry with you. And so long as you have a class with me, tote that bag with you, period. I would say just tote it with no books if I were you for didactic as well, just because we don't look at the book material very much within the didactic class. If we do look at anything, 
we're going to be looking um, at ways to get information very, very fast. So I do believe in using your phones. Oh my God, no. Okay, listen, phones are how we communicate with one another. Like, I don't understand why, why they say no phone. Like, I understand why they say no phones, right? Because there's always some egghead on Amazon. Like, I get that. But as uh, medical practitioners, as, as doctors of nursing practice in my case, um, I can attest with 100%, 100% uh, validity that every single practitioner, physician, nurse, tech, therapist, x-ray tech, pharmacist, everybody I've ever worked with in the 10 years that I've been working and I work at big hospitals. I've worked at, I've worked at Cleveland Clinic before. Like that's pretty impressive, right? Like all of these places use their phones. So why would I not allow you to do the same? This is how you find an answer quickly to figure out if you need to get a hold of a physician, to figure out if you need to get a hold of somebody, you check a men journal, duh. Why would I not show you how to do that? I'm absolutely going to show you how to do that. I'm sorry. It's, it's, listen, there's two worlds and academia and actual bedside is a little bit different because daggone it, if one hooked up with the other and the other one hooked up with that one and they got each other, it can be pretty powerful. It just so happens I walk between both of those worlds. So here we are, friends. So make sure that you bring these items with you and make sure why it's important that you do these things. I need you in the mentality out of the gate that you are a nurse. So bring your stethoscope, wear it on your daggum neck if you feel comfy, if you feel froggy, let's leap. If you're ready to say who you are and you're ready to attest your faith in the nursing profession, holler, wear it. I see people wearing necklaces with their faith on it. How is that any different? It is a lifestyle. Stick your daggum stethoscope on, own it, own your power and be it. So if you want to sit, wear a stethoscope every day to class, didactic or lab, you're going to use them either way. I'm going to use them. I'm going to find a way to use them. I need for you to be comfortable with them. These are your sword and your shield, friends. These are your weapons. I know that sounds crazy, but just do it, right? Just drink the Kool-Aid. Know it's mystery flavor. And when you figure it out, it's going to be really cool. Bring your laptops. I'm going to need for you to jump onto something really quick. Hey, let's do CJ Sims. Let's do it together for the last 20 minutes of class so we can knock it out. Hey, let's do next gen. We got an extra 10 minutes of class. Let's go ahead and knock out our next gen. I'm going to do those things. Bring it. Dress code. For the love of God, please don't make me have to write you up over dress code. Do you know how dumb that is? Like, I don't even mean to be funny, haha. That's just silly. Why, as a grown adult in my age, or her, 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 do I need to write you up on a citation like a hall monitor? I think of Cartman when he got the hall pass monitor job. Like, I'm not that guy. Don't come in with stuff in your face. You're not allowed to have stuff in your face, right? Don't come in with psychedelic shoes. You got to have white, right? But Molly, Professor Molly, you don't have to have that Ohio help. Yeah, I get that. We're trying to teach you to kind of be a little militant. Why, Professor Molly, I'm supposed to be unique. Okay, cool, I get that. You're also supposed to show up on time and follow the rules, okay? Any hospital system is going to watch you like a hawk because guess what? You have to be trusted in this profession. I got to be able to trust you with the lives of my entire house. Okay. It ain't like, Hey, you're going to babysit this perfectly capable kid. Who's 12 years old and knows how to make their own food and wash their own laundry. I'm going to go out for three hours and watch a movie. No, no, it's not like that. It's like, Hey, this person can't walk or talk or breathe. And you've got 35 seconds to make a decision, which is going to change the course of their existence, their family's existence, and the next 12 generations of the success based off of your choice. So it's a little bit different. Do you see why we're psychotic? Okay, cool. So this is why we are the way we are. So just go with it, please. It shows us that you care. If we know you care and you're kind of 
maybe a little bit of a difficult student because you got some family stuff going on or because you got some medical stuff going on we didn't know about or maybe maybe you're just a little uh on the abrasive side and a need a refinement people see you you know not like we see you because we see the beauty within you right like these are the times where i would create what i would like to call an exception, right? If you've got something medically going on and you're this student who's trying to do all of these things and be successful and you've shown me that because you've kept the dress code, you've done your homework, you've communicated with me and stayed up under my wing, dude, I'm gonna back you up. I got a lot of street cred in the city of Columbus all the way around. I can hook you up, right? Or I can say they're not a great option. So don't give me a reason to say those things. And I won't have to say them because good, better, and different. I can't really lie very well. I can lie. Everyone can. But man, do I really suck at it. So don't don't make me that person that's that obvious. You know what I'm saying? Just that's all you need for my class. I will teach you. We will go as we go. I have a very holistic way of teaching. It's a lot. I bounce around a lot. I do it for a reason. At the end of the semester, I tell you why I do it. Because if I tell you now, it is not going to appropriately rewire the way you need to think about what you think about. I, it doesn't make any sense right now. I just look like a crazy person until the end. But I'm willing to do that for you guys. So, guys, just go with it. Talk to people who have been in my class. Ask them what they think. Like... I'm willing to just risk whoever rando you see on the street that's, a, a, you know, maybe towards the end of their program. Just ask them, what's up with that Molly girl? Could somebody just explain what her deal is? And they'll let you know. Like, just trust what I'm doing and just follow it, please. Let's go to the next slide. I swear I'm not going to spend eight minutes talking on it. I promise. I promise. All right, again, grading. Grading is very squirrely with me because there are some hard stops. There's nothing I can do to get past it. So there's these things called key graded assignments or KGAs. Let me go ahead and underline this bad boy right here. KGA, key graded assessments or assignments, whatever you want to call it. Those are the ones that have to be at a minimum of 78% overall before I can pass you through my class. Now, in order to pass my class, you have to pass lab and you have to pass my class, which means you've got to be able to make the absent mark of less than 20% and you have to pass the class, which means you have to pass your final head to toe assessment, which sounds really scary, but hey, guess what? I've already put it on the YouTube channel for you. I've already put it on the TikTok channel for you and I'm going to record your own version so that you could do it yourselves. And as we record it together as a team, you guys are already going to be building your skills to do that. And you will learn how to do your head to toe assessment while recording for other people and not even realize that you're learning it because that's how I teach you. I teach you uh, oh yeah, I'm like Mr. Miyagi. That's exciting. I just realized that I really am. Yeah, because I have you painting the fence and sanding the floor and you're like, what the heck is going on? And then I start fighting you and you block it and you're like, what did I just do? And I'm like, I told you. Now, you know, go, I don't know, wax the cars. And don't forget, wax on, wax off. Like, that's what I do. That's cool. Okay, cool. That's what I do. That's exciting. I just... Yeah, cool. All right. I also don't edit so that you can see things in free form. Again, I need for you to see things as they develop because I need for you to understand what it is to develop an idea and what that transition looks like so that you can see the same thing happening within you. I didn't realize this a couple of semesters ago, but students in this class, because uh, you are past your, you know, elective that's, that you have to finish and then you're officially into nursing and nursing is so different. Um, it hits you like a ton of bricks and it's not because nursing is hard. Nursing is common sense. I always say that everyone rolls their eyes, but towards the end, they believe me. Nursing is common sense. It's the way we speak it. It's the way we articulate nursing that tries to make us look so much better than everybody. And that's what really makes it hard, but it doesn't have to be friends. It doesn't have to be. So 
Make sure that your KGAs, your key graded assignments, are going to be 78%. So that includes your examination for your three tests. That's 55% of your grade. I'm going to go over it in the next slide. Quizzes are 10%. So that's your next gen. You have to have, I think, 200 or 250 completed by the end of semester it sounds like a lot it's really not i promise a lot of the times we will do it in class because remember i do your lectures ahead of ahead of schedule i do them at home at my leisure so that i can really think about what it is and i'm saying what i what i should say what i shouldn't say what's important what's not what you're going to need for next semester the semester above what you're going to need for exit what's always going to be on the NCLEX. what can i start feeding in your brain now to start that long-term processing of repetition into your nociceptors of your brain I'm not making any sense to you right now because everyone's like, what the heck did she just do? And that's when I just basically snap into me talking about neuro, which is great because if you can change the brain, you change the person and we all want to be the best that we can be, right? So KGAs, after the 78% has been met, I can then put in your other pieces and parts so that I can level your grade up and make it better. What you need to know is if at any point you complete any other assignment other than your three examinations, your quizzes that are your next gen, or your final examination, it's going to show up as a zero. So please don't text me and ask me about it please because i'm going to tell you the same thing but i already told you twice and it's in your syllabus and on top of it i'm pretty sure i told you um in the announcements so it's not a big deal if you ask me the same thing over and over it's a big deal if i supply the information five or six times over and i have to answer the same question in front of 10 or 12 people over and over that's when it gets a little daunting because there's a lot of you and there's a lot of people that i deal with so just try try to do your best if you um, make a mistake don't don't apologize for making a mistake if you make a mistake and you did it intentionally and you did it to hurt somebody and you realize you know the, the wrath of your folly um, towards everyone else and then you want to apologize I will accept your apology otherwise don't say I'm sorry the self-deprecating Whoever apologizes for everything that they do, it's because they've been in a narcissistic personality disorder type of environment, you know, be it your parents or, you know, a partner. Anyone that apologizes every other word has been truly hurt on a level that unless you've experienced it, you truly don't know how debilitating it is. So you got a lot of work to do, kids, and it's going to be okay. And I'm proud of you, and I promise you you can get through it. And it starts with stop apologizing because there's nothing wrong with you. You're perfect just the way you are right now in this moment. I kid you not. You just got to believe me. I know it's stupid and squirrely. Just do it. Just believe me. All right. So I think I've explained KGAs along with a couple of other things. And I hope that you guys were able to swing along with the way I teach because it's completely flippity flop than everybody else. I, like, I'm sorry, a very merry unbirthday to you, like Mad Hatter style. I don't, I, you're going to be fine, I promise. The way that I teach you expands your brain in about 15 different directions on purpose. And it's like I touch the on button and you then know what it is to learn the art of nursing. And it's, it's going to be fine. You just got to trust me. It takes you about four weeks. And in that four weeks, how you feel about me is a little dicey. But once it's done, um, you know I'm always going to be here and it's going to be cool. Some of you guys jump right, like right out of the gate, you're, you're down for it. And a couple of you guys, eh, about 10%, it takes me a minute to pull, pull you guys into my world. But when you do, you stay. So it'll be cool. It'll be cool. Uh, let's go to the next slide and let's talk about KGA, but very briefly, because I feel like I've already tossed it uh, in every direction on this slide. Okay, so again, uh, key graded assignments or KGA, those are the assignments that I'm going to grade first, and that is your original 78 that you have to meet. Once that is met, then I consider all of your other grades, all of your other homeworks, all of your other side projects, da 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 da, da. Now, a word of caution. If you are these people that have 15 things going on, but you're naturally talented at doing 15 things, and then a 16th thing happens and you start bombing your exams, but you, like me, were the person that could barely do any effort at all and would totally jump through hoops like you wouldn't believe um, while doing the impossible. If you're that person, 
and you get into a realm of 78 or 79 and you don't do your homework or you fall behind on your homework or your homework grades kind of suck a little bit, if I'm honest. Maybe you get a 13 out of 20 and you don't remediate because you got other stuff going on, but you think you're going to be okay. If you play habitual line stepper, and listen, if you are habitual line stepper, I am not hating on habitual line steppers. Let me make this perfectly clear because I am the queen bee of all habitual line steppers, right? Just ask around. <laughs> Everybody knows it. Everybody's cool with it because as many people, as many of those people that hate it or hated it at one point, those are the people that love me when they needed it. Okay. So like I got enough, I got enough people up under my arm to know Habitual line steppers are some dicey, shady people, but literally they're the ace in the hole if you ever know them and they're trained well. And I'm trying to train you those people. Don't skate. Because here's what happened. When you skate on that 78 level and you didn't get those homework assignments, it will bump you under that 78 and you will fail my class. Now, here's how we get around this. If you have really bad grades on the other stuff, you can remediate. I will let you remediate. What is remediation? I'm glad you asked. Remediation is the ability to atone, atone. Please look up the definition of atone if you don't understand atone. Atone, not, we're, we're, we're not replacing, we're atoning. So what we're doing is learning from something that we mistakenly did incorrectly and we are then earning our achievement back. So uh, I get a 13 out of 20 on one of my weekly quizzes on my next gen, right? Like it went really, really bad. So what I do is I, I look at the material I missed. I say on a Word document, I missed question two. I missed question two because whatever the reason was. I missed question two because I didn't read the word not that was underlined and bolded and italicized and I walked right over it. What have I learned from that? What I've learned is I need to slow down. That's good enough for me. All right, cool. And then what's the answer and why? The answer is actually C because had I read that not, I know that that would have meant that this would have been the right answer because the answer means da 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 da. If you can answer those three questions, you can do it in a sentence. If you're creative, you can do it in less. If you can do those three things for me, I will give you that point back. I will do it for every single point because I would rather award you a point than to fail you and make you do an entire class over when what you needed to listen to wasn't the lesson of know the material because you're smart. You're so smart that you can be as slack as you are, which is why you're a habitual line step stepper. The lesson you need to learn is when to know when you're about to fall off the wire. And habitual line steppers usually don't know when to fall off the wire until it's too late. And that's the bad thing about a habitual line stepper. They are like Alexander the Great. If anyone knows who Alexander the Great was, Alexander the Great was one of the greatest habitual line steppers. He was glorious. He was known for being glorious. He was victorious. Everything he touched, he had the Midas touch. He was, he was a phenomenal guy. Had a lot of internal problems, blah, da, 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 pretty controversial, yada, yada. But... Case in fact, he was what he was, but a habitual line stepper he was. And, you know, when Icarus flies too close to the sun, the wings get melted off and it hits the ground face first. Don't be that guy. Don't make me lose you. You're very, very valuable to me. You are the Mel gets into my lethal weapon. You are the wild card. You are very important to me for a lot of reasons. Please don't get stuck in that line. Be smart. Don't be dumb. All right, next slide. All right, this is my slide called hard stop. So what will make you unsuccessful in my class? Well, some of these, there's nothing I can do about it. One of them is absences in excess of 20%. Now this is in your handbook. It is oddly specific. I am not gonna read it right now because it's Sunday and I'm at home and you can hear my kids in the background. Probably gonna be screaming here in a couple of minutes because they need my attention, but so do you. So um, read the policy, know what it means. It is oddly specific. Also, I am super cool about somebody being late because there's an accident on the road. I am super cool about somebody being a couple of minutes late uh, because they just got out of work and they got to get changed. Like, I get those things. I get them. Don't be so tardy and think I'm so cool that you're going to show up an hour late and I ain't going to do nothing. Because I got some people that think that they can do that to me. 
And let me tell you, when people do that to me, I'm going to just let you know what I do when that happens right ahead of schedule. I take copious mental notes. Now listen, my brain is like a supercomputer in a lot of ways, right? It's completely malfunctioned when it comes to basic, you know, hand-to-hand -hand, uh, like relationships, right? Just bogus, right? But when it comes to information, I can compartmentalize information and recall it like somebody pulls up a Word document from a year ago. It's kind of scary. So I take copious notes. I can tell a person how many times they have been late to my class, how many minutes they have been late, and how many excuses they've used, and what the derivatives of those excuses are. And I can tell you for several semesters even how much that happens. So I, I say these things because I will literally watch a person walk over me to see the level with which they are accustomed to walking over people and not even acknowledging accountability for that. Why would I do that? Well, because I am sniffing out great nurses. And part of being a great nurse is having integrity. And integrity is doing the right thing when nobody's watching. And if nobody is watching, AKA I'm playing dumb blonde, which I do a lot. I play space cadet a lot. I forewarn you guys a lot. And then I'm so good at what I do. You guys forget. And then you just, it's like big brother. You forget the cameras are there, but the cameras are always on, right? I will take notes mentally and watch you do this to me. And I will give you more rope so that you could get yourselves tied in that knot and in that entanglement until you finally learn that that is a big problem within you and it needs fixed immediately. And usually when I catch it, you're at your last wire length and I'm picking you up before you fall off of a cliff. Because I tell you, if you disrespect me or anybody I know in this institution, in this building, if you disrespect a fellow student or anybody out of ill will, I will let you fall and I will not catch you until you're about to hit hard. And then I will dust you off and then I will say, okay, it's time for correction. So don't tell me that the reason you're messed up is because somebody else didn't do their job. Okay. What could you have done to make that job go by faster? Case in point. Well, my so-and-so is messed up because such and such didn't get it done because they got this messed up. All right, well, why didn't they get it done, right? Well, while you're over there bumping your gums and don't know what's happening on the back end of things, why do you think that's happening? Probably because we're waiting on something. And we're waiting on something which is dependent on probably an exam or probably a test because we can't get a schedule or something done until these people are finally finished and those grades are posted because that's going to determine what your schedule is going to look like, which is why we can't do anything until all of these are done. But these aren't done because three of these students decided that they had something else going on and two of them were a medical and emergency. So we couldn't do anything about it. We had to wait. Like you guys don't think about these things. You're too busy just yelling and jacking your job at us now when you yell at us we take those copious notes when my friends go yo so and so really just hurt my feelings and they're up in their office and I'm in there with them and they're expressing that self-deprecating feeling of why is this my fault when I know it's not truly their fault but they're feeling it because you projected it to them that's when I get upset and I take copious notes. Don't do those things to people. Don't do it to people. I know it's hard. I know it's frustrating. Guys, I've, I've been a single mom through the entirety of my college nearly. I can, I can assure you it's very, very hard. With no resources, by the way, because my family wasn't even from Ohio, right? Like I separated from Wright Pat in 2010 and have been in Ohio ever since. But my family wasn't even here and now they're gone. So I'm telling you right in front of you, like I did it. I've done it. I'm still doing it. All right. So do what you need to do to not get that 20% absences and, and make sure that you understand that they stack if it's a lab. So make sure you're looking at that policy. Make sure that you're chilling out. Make sure that you're not playing the blame game because the blame game, I'm telling you, we will do anything for you to help you succeed. If anyone knows how important it is for you to succeed, it's me. 
Because I'm telling you, when you learn my story, it'll all make sense. My entire agenda, all this hocus pocus I'm screaming, it all will make makes perfect sense. I promise you. I, I am that guy that is going to teach you how to be so successful that you're not even going to recognize yourself in five years. I hope to God you don't. Because you are so much more than you're giving yourself credit for right this second. And you just don't even realize it. But I do. All right. Harassment of any kind. Not cool. Not going to do it. I don't like students harassing other students. I don't like teachers harassing other teachers. I don't like professors harassing other students. I've seen it. When I see it, I go stupid. If you don't believe me, ask any single student out in that cafeteria at any given moment what I do when somebody steps over the line with you guys or what I do if you guys step over somebody with the line. Everybody knows I've got hard limits. Hard limits. This world is perfectly capable of working together cohesively, enjoying each other's company, enjoying each other's favor with their personal creator and respecting everyone's creator in kind. We all have the ability to do it, dadgummit. I swear to Jesus, Allah, Shiva, like the corn god, everybody collectively, all of our friends, we have the ability to work and coexist together and make it a beautiful place. But all we have to do is learn to embrace our darkness within ourselves, right? Hug it with some light, and just walk around and be merry. We create our own complication through jealousy, greed, sloth, dumb stuff that we don't need, right? We need to work together. This world is going to die if we don't. We are the ones that create existence if you think about it hard enough. We are the ones that continue existence, not create, thank you, continue. Well, in some cases create because we got nurses in baby land, right? We are the warriors that keep humanity going. We are the ones that encourage them to walk when they are crippled and they have a chance at being able to walk again, but they need therapy. We are the ones that tell people that they deserve to live another day when they don't believe that they do. We are the ones that tell them it's okay when they feel like spiders are crawling on them and we hold them while we give them their medicine and we hold them until that medicine hits their system and it doesn't feel like ants are biting them anymore because they're withdrawing from heroin. And they don't have any body and that medicine hasn't hit yet. Oh, I just said that. Yes, drug dealers are good people. Drug addicts are good people. Yikes. Yeah, okay, cool. We'll get into that conversation too. Cuz I'm I'm going to blow your mind with a lot of concepts if you if you have hard stops in your brain. We need to expand the way we understand the world around us. And the good news is as many of you are LPNs, so you're already halfway there. The great news is, is I get to be the person that gets to walk you to the other side. And while I'm doing it, you guys get to teach me what you've learned thus far so that I can spread your message because there's a lot that you've learned transitioning from these two roles as well that I'm not even aware of because I've never been an LPM before. So please share that with me. Okay. So hard stops, you know not what to do. You break these rules, it turns to straight fire, right? Like I will not even think twice. I will go grab the big boys and eject, period. I have ejected people from my class for being harassing to other students in my class. Ejected. I mean, it got stupid. And I will look you hard in the face when you say something ugly about another student in my presence. I will hard look you in the face. And I won't yell at you. I won't say anything ugly. I won't shout. I'll probably look at you and take your soul out and let you stare at it for a couple of minutes and put it back in and see what you do with it. The last time this happened, I stood up very quietly and said, oh, so this is what it means to crush a bird in front of the world so that everyone can look into the eyes of butchery itself. Yikes. I mean, dang, like that's cold. That's cold. 
But that's what I do because the lesson needs to be learned. And in that moment, that's what you're doing to that person. You're suffocating them. You're just punching them in the face in front of everybody and they didn't do a single thing to you. So yes, I will eject you out of my room if you do that to somebody. Sorry, it's not cool. All right, next slide. All right, how to study. This is a big deal. Um, this is a sprint. This is not a marathon. This is not a pump and dump. You cannot throw a bunch of information in your brain, drop it, and then be good. This is a stacking process. So everything that you learn in my class is then going to stack onto Med Surge 1, which is then going to stack onto Med Surge 2. So if you lose anything in between the confines of A to B, you're going to miss a lot in the end. And in the end is when you have to have it all done, okay? So I'm going to teach you how to study. You need to do this in three sections. You need to have one that's no cards. And when I mean no cards, I mean no cards, hole punched into the corner, get one of those daggone key rings. Do one for every single one of your classes. Because in the end, when you do your exit HESI and you don't have any lecture material because you should already know it in the end, you're not freaking out in capstone because you're like, I don't know how to study for this thing. I don't even know what this what this exam is going to be over. I have no idea because we don't really we don't really lecture. Right. Like it's all about it's all about learning how to pass the exit exam. It's all about learning how to pass the NCLEX. Like there's no lecture. I don't know what to flip and do. Yeah, you do. You go back to all those stacks of note cards that you've done this entire time and you go over them. And that's how you pass this. All right, cool. Notebooks. You need to have two notebooks. You need to have one notebook that is I'm going to learn this information quickly and dump it. And then the other notebook needs to be this information I'm going to have down solidly. It's going to be organized. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to go over body system to body system. And it is going to stack cumulatively from class to class. And that is when you need to keep the entire time. So when you go back to it, you literally have the answers to everything that you need for the entirety of the exit HESI slash NCLEX because you have spent this entire time studying for it. It will take you five minutes to pass these exams if you have that material, but nobody does it. Why? Because it means that you can't slack off. Now, I'm a professional student. When I say I'm a professional student, I mean like legit. I've been a student since 2010. It's 2013. I'm still a student. I have not stopped being a student. The longest I've gone without being a student was when I got my doctorate in nursing practice in 2021. 2022, I don't know, one of those. And I spent 11 days trying to figure out what I was going to do. And on the 12th day, I applied to a little school called Harvard and I got accepted. And then I started that program. So like I am a full-time student. <laughs> and I will tell you that this is going to save your butt as a professional student. This is the one thing that if I would have started... It would have been this, and I, I didn't do it, and I was a knucklehead, and it took me a long time to get caught up, but boy, it was easy to study after that, for sure. So this is the reason I'm creating this lecture series. This lecture series is like my love letter to what I would love for you to be able to study and how you'd be able to study it. So hopefully you're going to buy into this craziness and learn something from it because that would be super awesome. Um, study guides for exams. Study guides for exams are very important because you're going to notice that the same thing comes over and over and over and over and over. So your first exam for me might be like, hey, the four chambers of the heart of the four chambers, which one is, you know, the most important? Well, I can tell you it's not going to be an atrium. and that's a joke for later. But for right now, it's not funny. haha. -ha, but it will be for next week when we have class. So you're going to know that probably the most important is your left ventricle because it is the one that pumps through the rest of your body. So it has a, a lot of real estate. Super important, right? So what you'll need to know is you know for my class left ventricular failure is far greater than I don't know uh, right atrial failure right so then that'll stack onto something else specifically what types of medicine do we need to have for this patient that's med surge one and the med surge two will then stack on with uh, with a patient taking this medication what is an overdose of this medication create and then the next one will be the medication that creates an overdose what toxicity levels do we need to get so like they stack on top of each other like this which is why you should be studying for your exams in such a manner that has all of the information put down in like outline format so then you stick it next to your next uh, class that you have and you go oh these 
these came back again and then you circle them and guess what that's the material that we're teaching you to pass your NCLEX to pass your um, final exit exam like this is developed in such a way on purpose it's not like we just threw pages up in the air and said okay this is a class we're going to teach for the semester so do what I'm telling you to do and I think we should probably have a class where we actually work on putting notebooks together that's kind of a genius idea if one of you guys are listening, text me that because I know I'm going to forget to text it to myself because my phone's on the other side of the house. So text me that message so that I don't forget. And I know that at least one of you will. All right, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so it baffles me that you guys have been through school for nearly a year now and no one has explained what a syllabus is. That's crazy to me. That's crazy. Everyone always says that. And I always look at everybody like for real. For real? But I guess it I guess some people don't catch it and that's cool. Or maybe they don't maybe they don't explain it at all and it's just assumed. Like I don't know. It's weird though. So here we go. Here's the syllabus. Your syllabus is basically your contract about what you're gonna be learning for the entirety of that class, when your grades are, when your assignments are due, how much your quizzes are worth, um, what your group projects entail right like all of your stuff is in there you need to read that stuff also your hard stops are in there so like due dates for things exceptions that can be made um, no exceptions that can be made uh, what we're looking for as far as uh, completion of material things of that nature and of course any other questions in addition to that you can just get us and let us know um, so syllabus is always going to be the first thing the professor is going to ask you, did you read your syllabus? So I get silly questions all the time. So on the eight emails that I had on four of those email accounts and on my text messaging, I probably had four or five emails that said, Hey, I missed class. What did I miss? And I'm like, uh, you missed an entire class. We talked about the syllabus. Well, what did I miss on the syllabus? Well, if just read the syllabus. Just read the syllabus because what you're asking me to do is then teach you another three hour class and I know you're not going to spend three hours with me one and then two. Um, I, I can't just like type a couple of notes like it doesn't really it, like it doesn't work that way. So please make sure that you are paying attention to your syllabus and if there's any deviation I'll let you know and again there's grace to be had in this class this is a sandbox environment so if you mess up and it's an honest mistake cool if you have a habitual issue messing up often and thinking that you pretended to be cool with me even though we're not cool because you secretly also talk bad about me in the hallway but I hear about it because your friends tell me about it like if it's that type of sitch it's not gonna go well so just do do right and you're gonna do great and know that if you have checked your syllabus it's always a good idea when you're when you're uh, contacting your professor say hey this is so and so I'm in such and such class I've already reviewed the syllabus and I may have overlooked it but here's my question if you've done that, homie, you got all the respect in the world. I will bend over backwards so that you understand something. And if there's a mistake that was made, I'm going to give you grace and we're going to figure it out. Do you see the difference? Please understand the difference because this is how you approach life, friends. This is how you get what you get. This is how. You ever had that person that you're like, hey, that person's kind of dumb. But you don't want to say they're dumb, but you know they're dumb. And you know you run circles around them, but you also know that you don't play politics and they play politics. And because of that, they got the nurse manager job or they got this job or they got the, I don't know, the lead secretary job or they got the CEO job. They like they got the head job and you're just like, for real, for real, for real, like I'm going to be doing this person's work. What made the difference? Politics, playing pretty, playing the pageant game. If you want to rule the game itself, you have to to first play the game to get into the center of the circle. And then once you're in the center, you can change the ripple to be whatever you want it to be. So it's about street cred, right? No studio gangster is gonna get credit for being a gangster because they're a studio gangster. So I wouldn't be expected to give anybody credit unless you walk into the center of the circle and made it what it is to be. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I hope you understand where I'm getting with that. So play the politics and the politics are simple. 
Don't run your mouth to anybody. Don't go spreading rumors and lies about people. Don't try to downgrade people and make them look worse. The problem isn't them. The problem's truly you. So figure yourself out. Okay? These are the things we're going to work on together. Some of you guys, it's going to be really easy. You're going to correct yourself. Some of you guys are going to be so self-loathing. You're going to think I'm truly talking to you right in this moment. And I'm not. I don't even know who's listening to this. If that is affecting you right now, if you're feeling triggered by the things that I'm saying, you're starting to get nervous. I don't even know who you are listening to this. I need for you to go look in the mirror and tell yourself that you're beautiful and you're good enough and I'm proud of you. And calm down. Give yourself some grace. Remain calm. You've earned the grace. You walked into these doors. It's not easy to do that. You've gotten through several semesters. Give yourself some grace. Stop. Stop. I'm here to lift you up, not throw you on the ground. Come on, friend. All right, last slide. And then if you have any questions, just send me a text. It's cool. Final thoughts in all caps. I'm proud of you. Why did I do that? Well, because I am. And partially because, let's be honest, the things that we speak of most are the things that we wished were most spoken to us. Right? Again, I'm an open book. I have no fear in this world uh, of any of my insecurities, right? Like, I, I want to explore my insecurities just like you explore your insecurities because in order to challenge you, I must challenge myself. Otherwise, I'm just bumping my gums and I'm not really doing anything to show that I'm trying to be committed like you are. Okay? I'm throwing my neck out there. Throw yours out there. It's okay. Ain't nobody's neck going to get knocked off. There ain't no, there's road construction. Ain't nobody allowed through this road. We're good. It's closed. So this is meant for you to be proud of yourself because I'm proud of you. I'm proud of everything that you've been through to get here. I'm proud of that tough decision you made that was like, this is a gamble. I don't know if I can do this. Even before you got this, uh, many of you are LPNs. Do you remember how hard it was to go, all right, I got to do something. I got to get out of this situation that I'm in, whatever that situation was. I got to get out. I got to get out of this life. I got to do something. Let me just take a bite out of this. Let me just get this little technical degree right here, because if I get this, then, you know, then I'll be good. I'll have a, I'll have a career. It'll be good. But it wasn't enough, was it? it? Wasn't enough. You got in there and you're like, I'm not getting enough responsibility. They're not treating me like a human being. They're treating me like a pill pusher. They're treating me like a babysitter. I'm not. I'm none of those things. That's right, girl. That's right, boy. You were none of those things. You get angry. You get hard. You get cocky. That's right. I like that. It's dicey. It tastes good. It's a little spicy on the end. Got a nice Chianti to it. I love it. It's got a little bite on the end. Perfect. All right. You did that. You went through that. You claimed that. Don't you let this scare you. The jump from an LPN to an RN, it is a jump. It is a big jump for a lot of different reasons. It's mentally a different reason. You've been beaten down your entire life. As an LPN, unfortunately, we continue to treat you that way. It's super stupid. I've never understood it. I can't help what idiots do. I can only help to create no more idiots, <laughs> which is what I'm trying to do. The reason I look so cool is because I represent human evolution. But the reason I look like such a weirdo is because there's only a handful of me and there's more of those hateful people. So what am I trying to do? I'm trying to switch the light on, turn the volume up, turn the frequency up, turn the vibration up, get the energy popping, and then let's all get it together. Right? Because you have the same ability to think and do what I do because I was you. I was you. I was scared. I was hurt. I was afraid. I was petrified beyond belief. I was so afraid to learn at one point. As an adult, I was so afraid to learn because I didn't think I could learn that I didn't even show up to my first classes the first time I tried my first degree. I just realized this. Nursing wasn't my first degree attempt. My first degree attempt was actually in England. I tried to get a business degree at the War College in England and um, on, at the Royal Air Force in Mildenhall. 
and I had a five minute presentation where I could pick any topic and I was supposed to present it. It was a communications class. I was 21, 21. I was so afraid. I stayed up all night for a five minute oral presentation. I stayed up all night to prep for this thing. Now, mind you, I, I was a person who was working a super cool job at the time. So there should have been no need for me to be afraid. But here I was. And I got there and they called my name and I didn't stand up. And there was mm, probably 100 people in the room. And I didn't stand. And he just kept calling over and over. And at one point looked straight at me because there weren't very many women in the class. And I just sat there. And then I just walked out of the class and never came back again fear. That's how afraid I was. I was physically crippled. I was physically unable to stand because my fear had crippled me. I've gone from that to what I am today. You can do absolutely that. I was actually even lower than that at one point, but we'll get into it later. I'm telling you, you can do what I do. Nothing that I do is supernatural. It's just science. It's just approaching life differently. And I want you to do that. I want you to be proud of yourself for the same reason. For your own reason, obviously. But the pride is the same. Experience is different. Protect your nursing family. Your nursing family starts today. Everyone around you that you sit next to at some point, if they make it through, you're going to be working with them. You think I'm joking. I have worked all over the state of Ohio. I've worked in many states, in fact. And I always find somebody I know. Ironically enough, your pharmacology teacher, Professor Willis, I actually worked with him for a year and didn't even know it until I started working um, as a professor and met him as a professor. And his voice was very familiar because I realized he used to give me a report on the phone all the time because he was in the emergency department at one facility in Athens. And I was on uh, the PCU and the ICU and the med surge unit. So I would constantly get reports. And I was like, God, you're familiar. So we are all going to be around each other. You were going to work with me outside of this facility. I'm going to be either your provider or I'll be a colleague as a nurse because I'm still a traveler. Um, we protect each other from the beginning. There are some of you that are my students who I have worked with as a traveler who are now students and have seen me here um, as a professor role. That's kind of bizarre, too. I'm going to use you often to explain, you know, what kind of work ethic I have, because you know me better than anybody. You know the glory side of me. You don't know the intellectual side of me. You're going to see the intellectual side of me. You're used to the fun me, right? So you're going to see a different part and piece. Guys, you're all going to be okay. That's what I'm talking for 52 minutes and 19 seconds is I need for you to let my class, not the other classes. I understand you have to really, really try hard in those guys and I'll help you. But in this class, particularly, this class is a very gentle class. It has a lot of opportunity and that opportunity to me is an opportunity to rewire what it is that you know about nursing, to rewire what it is that you know about yourself to rewire and help you rewire yourself and get rid of all of those little microaggressions that you have that you just can't stand about yourself and that you know that you would be living your best life if you didn't have them. Let me take them off of your hands. Let me carry them for you. Let me. I can. I'm quite strong. I'm quite brave. I'm quite courageous. I have an iron chin. I know what it's like to walk in your shoes. I truly do. I heard a couple of them go, nah, bet, bet. I would gather to say that you probably don't know what it is to walk in mine. Ooh, snap. So we have 11 more weeks of an adventure together. If we have a problem, relax, remain calm, notify me, let me know what the deal is. Don't blame. Let me know what happened. Let me know what might have happened. If it's a problem with you, it might be a problem with somebody else. Remain calm and learn. Learn every day. Learn something new every day. 
I challenge you to do one more thing in my class, and this is the final thing I'll say here. I challenge you to challenge yourself to try one thing a day that you were afraid of. It could be a small fear. It could be something stupid. Or it could be big. Every single day, find a fear. Try to transmute it. Transmutation means... I'm taking something out of something and I'm turning it into something different. I'm taking a negative, I'm turning it into a positive. So let's say I'm afraid of spiders. All right, cool. I'm not asking you to go put a spider in your hand. I'm not asking you to step on a spider either. I'm asking you to, I don't know, research a spider. Learn something about it. Find out why it's important. If you find out its importance, it suddenly doesn't become so fearful, does it? If you find out the why, then all of a sudden that fear is nothing more than an illusion. What I challenge you to realize in this, in this, I guess we can call this a, in this case study, if you will, what I challenge for you to get out of this is realizing that Limitations, much like fears, are simply nothing more than an illusion that we create within ourselves. So create a way to remove the illusion, and there is no illusion to be had, only the reality that you've created. All right, my darlings, I love you and I'm proud of you. You got this. Breathe. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. The only person who is going to hurt you is you. All I'm going to do is hold the mirror and force you to look into it. Beyond that, it's on you. You're going to do great. If you get stuck, send me a message. Call me. It's okay. I will see you guys later. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this was helpful. I hope this answered a couple of questions. If you're having trouble with things, don't freak out. We're going to deal with it next week, and I'm going to see you in lab as well. All right, have a good one.